Do you ever get nervous when you're about to share your faith in Jesus with someone? Our sister Banesh lives in the Islamic Republic of Iran. Banesh has good reason to be cautious when sharing her faith. She could go to jail, but she boldly shares anyway. That person that I want to share Christ with maybe is working with the police. We have hidden secret police, so sharing the gospel with secret police would be very dangerous. Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help, right now on The Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network. Welcome again to The Voice of the Martyrs Radio. My name is Todd Nettleton, and I'm in the studio in Bartlesville, Oklahoma this week. But what you're going to hear is a little bit different than our normal VOM radio episode. A few months ago, I was in the Middle East, and I had the chance to interview a woman. I'm going to call her Banesh. That's not her real name, uh, but we're going to call her Banesh today. She lives in the nation of Iran, the Islamic Republic of Iran. Uh, And so we are going to recreate that conversation for you this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Banesh has been following Jesus for less than five years but she's already planted more than 30 house churches. Let me say that again. Banesh has been following Jesus less than five years, but she's already planted 30 house churches. When I had the chance to meet her, I did not have a good microphone or a a studio set up to record the conversation. And honestly, even if I did, we couldn't play Banesh's voice because that would be too dangerous, too risky for her. So we've gotten some help from our friends at Mohabbat TV, and we have recreated the conversation. And so what you're going to hear is taken directly from the transcripts of the interview with Banesh. It's not her real voice, but it is her real story. It is her real words. And I know you're going to be challenged by her example this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio. It's an honor for us to meet you, Banesh, and to be able to hear your story. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being willing to have this conversation. Before you met Jesus, what was your faith like? Were, were you a devout Muslim, kind of pray five times a day, very devout, or were you kind of a lackadaisical Muslim? What, what was your faith like before you met Jesus? Before coming to Christ, I was in an Islamic family. Normal Islamic family, we do all the praying like the Quran says. We did it all. But there was something missing that would make you want to leave Islam and follow Christ. What what was missing? We do praying the Islamic namaz prayers five times a day. But I was thinking something is wrong. Why does God need me praying five times? And also sometimes I would go to my father and ask questions. Father, why should we be praying like this? My father said, try to think in your heart. What does um, your heart want? You can talk to Allah with your language. Because these things happen, I was starting to like doubt about my fate. You can talk to Allah in your language, meaning Farsi, not, not in Arabic? What did he mean by talk to Allah in your language? My father would tell me, some people, they are not educated. They cannot read Arabic language. Because of that, you can, by your own language, talk to Allah. So when you heard the gospel, when you heard about Jesus, what was it that made you want to follow him? What drew you to following Jesus? I found out in Islam uh, that Allah was killing or like cutting the hands of a thief and other kinds of violence. But when I find out about Christ, he never talked about these things. Jesus talked about peace. He talked about love. Because of these things, uh, I'm interested to follow him. How did you first hear about Christ? Who was it that shared the gospel with you? When I was a teenager, 
I find out the Christian, the women are more free. They don't have to wear a headscarf and find out their life is better. They have more peace and like sometimes they see Jesus in their dreams, a special light. So you found out that women are more free in Christianity. Did someone tell you that? Did you read that somewhere? Did you see that online? How did you hear that? In my neighborhood, some people come from the big city, and some women talk about the life in Christianity. I was just a teenager listening to their conversation, and it made me interested to know more. So then at what point did you make the decision to actually follow Christ? Who brought you to that point? After I go to the college, my father was sick, very sick. My mother always praying to Allah, always praying for my father to get well. But nothing happened. I was thinking, why Allah doesn't answer her prayers? I tried to search about praying in Islam and Christianity. And then I found in Christianity, prayer is different and powerful. You searched online? The internet, yes. At that time, I was looking to find the real praying to help my family. I tried to find some Christian believer, and uh, here in Iran, it's so dangerous. It is not easy. But in the college, I met a friend, and she was uh, born in Christian family. She was a good friend. I find out that she is a different, and it makes me uh, more interested in Uh, being Christian, but she couldn't help me too much. After finishing college, I moved to a different city for a job. In my job, there is a guy who brought me to a church meeting. Sitting in the meeting, I felt like it was like a God's plan. God wants me to be here in this meeting. Then uh, through that meeting, I met other believers who have helped me grow and discipled me. When you made the decision to follow Christ, tell me about that experience. What happened inside of you? What was that like? When I became a Christian, I got baptized. It was around that time my parents died, in like a short time. So I was like in a bad situation, feeling so bad. I was also a little scared to be Christian, like maybe when I go back to my home, people know about me and know I'm Christian. When I started praying, some special peace come to me. I was feeling better. And because of that feeling, I knew this is a real thing, what I'm looking for. I was in Iran and I was thinking, should I share it with uh, someone else? I was scared. I knew it is important to share, but should I do it or not? So let me ask, when you made the decision to follow Christ, did you think that was dangerous for you? Was there any fear of what might happen to you or just peace? When I become a Christian, peace come. Personally, peace come. But when I go back to my family, I was scared to tell the family, maybe like uh, aunt, uncle, what they will think about it. Uh, They are Muslim. Maybe they will reject me. So you were more afraid of your family rejecting you than of the government arresting you or, or something like that? First, I scared from my family, but something tell me, go and talk to your family. Then I started to talk to my sister, and she accepted it. I was feeling better. The second fear is uh, from the regime. My family was okay with my fate, but still there is fear from the regime. So when you told your family, they did not reject you. They were interested? Yes. At that time, my parents had passed away and my sister, yes, accepted it. Did they see something different in you? Did did they see that you had changed? Yes. They came to me and asked, something has changed in you. Uh, We want to know what it is. What did they see that was different about you? Like they see, uh, because at that time, my parents had died, and my sisters find out that even with our parents' loss, uh, I have peace. And also, they think my face changed. Your face? Yes. They ask, what changed with you? And also, my cousin asked me. Before, uh, because my parents had died, usually I was crying. I was sad and crying. But after finding Christ, I was never crying. Then they asked me why I changed. My mind changed a lot about life and about dying. 
and they ask me questions about these things. You're listening to The Voice of the Martyrs Radio. This week, we are listening to a recreated conversation with an Iranian lady named Banesh. I interviewed her several months ago in the Middle East. We can't play her actual voice for you, so we have recreated this conversation for this week's episode of Voice of the Martyrs Radio. They wanted to know what had changed. So you were at first nervous about talking to your family, but they were very accepting. Then you were nervous about talking to other people outside your family because of the police and the regime. How did you get involved with talking to other people about Jesus? I was thinking about how to share with other people. I found out that I was able to reach out to people through my job. People I met because of my job, and I started using these opportunities. Sometimes I meet people who are having trouble, and I try to help them. Also, I read some books talking about Jesus. I started using these things and sharing them with people. If someone comes to you and they're having trouble and they want to talk to you, how do you lead them towards Jesus in that conversation? When I'm talking with the woman, I find out usually with women, we are tired with Islam. When I find out they are tired with Islam, I started suggesting they can uh, try other prophets. Uh, They might like other religion. Uh, Then I find out if they are interested. Usually people who come to me have some pain, uh, some trouble. And I can ask, do you know Jesus heals people? I started with this step by step if they are interested in sharing. Do you have any fear in having those conversations that you will get in trouble or that they could make trouble for you? Or because they have pain in their lives, they're open to whatever will help with that pain? Fortunately, at that time, I was like blind. I didn't see the Islamic regime. I just want to help people take the pain out and help them know Christ. I didn't think about anything else. Later, I was thinking, wow, this is dangerous. How did I do it? (laughs) So in the moment, you don't worry about it. But then afterwards, you were thinking, wow, that was kind of dangerous. The time I was most scared was about distributing Bibles. Uh, Always, I was praying with God and uh, 100% knowing that God will take care of me and then peace come. Do you think about worst-case scenarios? How do you prepare yourself for the idea that you could be persecuted, you could be arrested, things could go badly? I decided, don't think about like these things, because I knew there was danger. I was thinking that Jesus on the cross sacrificed himself. I want to do this. How difficult is it to bring new believers into a fellowship? Because you have to be concerned about security. You have to be concerned about how sincere they are. What is the process once you talk to someone and they choose to follow Christ to then bring them into a group with other believers? To start Uh, I was in college, and I would find close friends. Also, I started with my sisters. First, I just share a little to see are they interested. If they like it, then uh, if they are interested, I start sharing exactly and tell them I also am a Christian. In Iran, it is a hard thing to bring them to a group, but I started out with people who were close to me. So you started with people that you already had close relationships with? Yes. First, I started to tell them, let's have a group gathering, caring about each other, praying for each other. As a group, praying, it is powerful. And we also ask some uh, giving for needs around us. I started with this. I didn't tell them this is a church until after we were already meeting. We are hearing that the people in Iran are very open to the gospel. They are frustrated with the government. They're frustrated with Islam. They are very open. Is that your experience, that people are open to hearing about something else, about other options? Before I started sharing with people, I didn't know this. But it is exactly like you said, it is like this. People are all so tired, so tired, especially with Islam. Uh, They are looking for something special. 
when I started sharing with people, most often they said, God sent you. We are looking for something like this. So you feel like God is preparing the way ahead of you. Yes, I think that. Uh, when I went to start multiple churches, I thought everything is going so well. Can you tell me a story of someone recently who came to faith who you felt like God had prepared them to meet you? For example, there was a family living in some uh, house where I was staying in other rooms. One of them came to me and said, I was reading a book and it was talking about Jesus, miracles. I'm looking to find out about Jesus. The book also talked about Jesus is God. How is that possible? I am looking for someone to talk about this for me. They came to me and asked me to talk to them about Jesus. Of course, I was happy to do that. We're talking today on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Banesh. She is a lady from Iran who has planted more than 30 house churches in, in just the last less than five years. We have recreated this conversation from a conversation I had with her in the Middle East. We are using a different voice. We're using a different name in order to protect her security, working for the gospel inside of Iran. How should people outside of Iran pray for the people inside Iran? How can we pray for you and for Iran as a whole? The first thing is the regime, that God will blind the regime so they don't see believers. And also some of the believers are afraid because of regime. Ask God to give them a boldness for doing more and for God prepare more people to hear the gospel. When you are talking to someone about faith, what is the most dangerous part of the process? Like, what is the point that could most cause problems? That person that I want to share Christ with maybe is working with the police. We have hidden secret police, so sharing the gospel with secret police would be very dangerous. Now we have a lot of experience how to share with people. For example, I talk to my leaders. When you want to share before you share uh, about Jesus, try to have a good relationship, knowing the person well. Then uh, try to start with just with the story about Bible, story about Jesus. If they are interested, at first, we don't tell um, them we are Christian. We just share some story from Bible. Do you say, hey, this is a story from the Bible? Or do you just tell the story and then kind of see how they respond? First, uh, I just say this is a story. I didn't tell uh, where the story came from. If there is a good response, then I will say the story is from Christians, from the Bible. When you give someone a Bible, how, how do you do that? Or, or how does that work? For example, I am teaching a friend. I tell them, I have books that talk about all the prophets in your language, in Farsi. Uh, through this introduction, I give them a Bible. Also, usually with people from the older generation, usually I talk about prophet, for example, David or Solomon. Uh, I can tell them these uh, stories are in this book when I give the Bible to them. So you said that you will often just tell someone a story, but not necessarily say that the story is from the Bible. Is there like one or two stories that you often use, or is it a different story depending on what that person's situation is? It's up to the situation. For example, for a lady in the gym, we were talking about how Islam is judging women and harsh toward women. I shared with her the story of Jesus and the woman caught in adultery of Jesus forgiving that woman. So what's the biggest challenge you're facing in your ministry right now? The first thing is security. Also, we send a lot of reports to our leaders, and this makes some of the believers uh, nervous. Like, why you want to take pictures of people? Also, we always need more teaching resources and also time problem. Time management? Yes, usually the leaders have a, a busy job, a full-time job. Sometimes when I go, they are not available, not in touch for me to train them or update them. Because they are working a full-time job plus doing the ministry? Yes. So just being able to have time to connect with leaders and to carry out the ministry work? Yes. 
What would you say to Christians who don't share their faith? They don't talk to other people, whether they're in Iran or whether they're in America or wherever they live, but they don't share their faith with people. How would you challenge them? First, I think if people are believers, they cannot not share. I will tell them, you have experienced the joy and the peace of Christ, but other people also need to experience this. Amen. Is there anything else that you would like us to know about your ministry or about you? As you know, the situation for Christians in Iran is so dangerous. The leaders, they have a face. They are real people, and we need you to pray. We feel good that there are people praying for us and care about us. There are people who are praying and do care. Part of our ministry at Voice of the Martyrs, and especially with Voice of the Martyrs Radio, is to equip those people to pray for you, to pray for the nation of Iran. That's why we want to share your stories, to help them pray with knowledge. Thank you for coming to meet with us. Thank you for sharing your story. Merci, merci. You've been listening to The Voice of the Martyrs Radio, where we have recreated a conversation with an Iranian lady. We're calling her Banesh. As I mentioned earlier, we recreated this from a conversation I had and recorded with her in the Middle East. We can't share her real name. We can't broadcast her real voice. So we have recreated that conversation to encourage you to help you pray for the nation of Iran I want to challenge you not only to pray for Iran, I want to challenge you to share this conversation with a Christian friend this week. Send them a link, uh, have them subscribe to the VOM Radio podcast, connect with them, and help them to understand what's happening in Iran. Uh, I was incredibly challenged by the conversation with Banesh and by the fact that uh, this Iranian lady has planted more than 30 house churches in less than five years simply by being a witness for Jesus in in every conversation, looking for opportunities to pray with someone, to share a Bible story with someone. And and I thought, I need to be more like Banesh. I need to live that way in my own life and keep my own eyes open for every opportunity to be light and salt and plant seeds of the gospel into the lives of people around us. So share this conversation. You can find links at vomradio.net to subscribe to all the different podcast services. Uh, Share those podcast links. Share links to this particular episode. Help your Christian friends know how to pray for the nation of Iran. And while you're at the website, vomradio.net, take a moment and write us a note. Share how God is using Voice of the Martyrs Radio in your life. I love every single one of these letters, like hearing from Isaac, who is listening all the way over in New Zealand. Isaac says, thank you so much for your podcast. It has truly greatly inspired me to seek a deeper relationship with Jesus and also given me a passion for the persecuted church and to support them in prayer. Julie wrote in to say, and by the way, Julie is a mother of nine She said, recently an episode spurred me on to connect with some foreign families who live near me, and the Lord opened the door wide to start up English classes for them. Julie says, praise the Lord. We've already talked about the gospel in our English class. Three Muslims are a part of this class. Julie, thank you so much for your letter. Thank you for the work you're doing to to carry this out, to make it a part of your life. Uh, The stories that we hear about witnessing to Muslims, I'm so excited to see you take that and, and put it into practice in your own neighborhood. We also got a note from Hannah, and this is one of my favorite kinds of notes. Hannah says, VOM Radio is one of the reasons I feel called to missions. Hannah, that makes my heart so happy to hear that. She says, hearing about the work God is doing around the world is the thing I look forward to every weekend. Again, Hannah, thank you. Bless you as you pursue that call. Go to vomradio.net. Send us a note. There's a box right at the bottom of the page. You can just type in your note, hit send. I would love to hear from you. I do read every single one of these notes. Also, be sure that you're back with us next week. You know, One of the things that we wonder about in our free world churches is, what if persecution is going to come here? 
What if I'm going to have to endure the things that our brothers and sisters in Iran and China and other nations are already enduring? We're going to share some thoughts on how to prepare our hearts and our minds for the day when persecution may come to us. I want you to be a part of that conversation, so be sure that you're back with us next week right here on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network.